So I'm talking about makeup tips for older skin. You have to do things differently um, and different seasons of your life. So I've got some tips that I have found that I don't hear a lot of people talking about. And they're not all completely original, but um, some of them, I don't think I've heard them. Hey, I'm Maggie D. Welcome to my channel. It's all about makeup for over 50 crowd. I would really appreciate it if you would consider subscribing to my channel. And if you like my videos, would love a thumbs up and any comments that you want to leave. I'm always um, very appreciative of those. I get a lot of recommendations and ideas from um, the comments that people are leaving for me. So thank you for that. First up, I have powder. Um, I keep hearing and seeing advice about not using so much powder, but then I just keep seeing <laughs> um, my fellow YouTubers and even me, I keep seeing myself still putting the powder all over my face. I mean, it really takes a lot of restraint to rein that in. For the over 50, older skin, you'll probably do better if you don't have a big brush. I have several big powder brushes and go like all over your face, dip all over. Even if you're just dipping a little bit, you're going everywhere. It's catching all your little hairs. It's just not the best look. If you can stick to setting powders and not finishing powders, you're going to be ahead of the game. Finishing powders are designed to smooth everything out after you have your makeup on. Um, your blush, your foundation, any little bit. And that works great up to a certain level of wrinkles and texture and pores. And once you get all of that going on your face, usually after menopause, it starts to get dramatically worse or more pronounced it becomes harder to use a finishing powder and still look good or look the way you want to look. So if you switch to a setting powder, you might like that better. I've got a few to um, mention here. I'm not selling these powders. <laughs> um, I see this one all the time, the Charlotte Tilbury powder. It's pricey and a lot of people swear by it. I like it just fine. It's, even though it comes in colors, it really goes on pretty translucent, which is another thing you really need to think about. Try not, not to get the powders that are in the flesh tones. I have this mini hourglass. This is another pricey powder, and this is a loose one. It is the hourglass. I'll put the name on it, but it's a setting powder, and it is a little more yellow, although I can't really pick up that color on my face. And then I have e.l.f. Halo Glow Setting Powder, and this one's got a pink, little bit of pink to it. I like this just as well as the high end because, number one, you're not using a lot of powder. It's really hard to tell if it's fantastic or not unless you're using a lot of it. If you're just using a little, it doesn't make a big difference. I also like this NARS this is definitely the most translucent one I have. It's white. May not work for darker skin tones, even though it's supposed to be translucent. It might turn it up too light on your skin. The secret is this kind of brush. No more big fluffy brushes. This kind of brush, something like this, but fluffy, not too dense. Some people use a really big eyeshadow blending brush, like a, um, I don't really have one of those. I've got something like this. Either one of these works for me. So, and then I just, you're really using your powder. You're not trying to smooth everything out. You're using your powder just to help set your concealer and foundation in the areas that really get the, um, creasing and uh, fine lines and wrinkles. So it does help out here. It helps it not settle. Sometimes I can wear a foundation 
without having those problems. Whereas if I don't set it with powder, it runs and gets blotchy. For me, the areas are right here, right here. I put a little bit under there, just, I mean, the tiniest amount. And then I put just a little bit right here. It's really tricky for me right here on my marionette lines and my nasal well, folds. I forgot what those are called. Because I have so much texture right here. This whole like triangle around my mouth is my most textured area. So I'm really light with it right there. And then I stay away, no powder here. And I have big crease wrinkles right here, my heaviest lines. And I keep the powder out of that. And my makeup always settles right there. So after I put it on, I like dig it out with a sponge. Sometimes I have to take my finger on those and get, just get it out. I mean, that's just what you gotta do. So my next tip for over 50 makeup tips for older skin is lay off all these mats. Um, matte, matte, matte everything is going to age you. It is. If you like a matte foundation, that's okay. I mean, everyone likes what they like. You could try to lighten it up just a little, <laughs> or you could try to maybe uh, find a setting spray that doesn't dry you out. I don't have one that doesn't dry me out. They all make my skin look feel dry, but you could try that. But if you will switch to cream blush and cream eyeshadow, even with your more matte coverage foundation, and even with your more the little bit of powder, it will really make you look more contemporary and more, I'm gonna say the word modern, although I don't like that word when it comes to makeup. It makes me think of like extreme. Um, I don't mean modern in that way, but it's gonna make you look less dated. And when you look dated, like you've been doing your makeup the same way for the last 10, 15, 20 years, it also makes you look older because you're just like, whoa, she never got out of the 90s with all that matte. So um, try some new things. Try to go cream here and cream here. Just try. And then I'm going to talk about lips in a minute. But I have one more thing that I think is my top tip. And I do hear this a lot. So, But I'm just reinforcing it because your eyeliner is tricky as you get older. Stop with the heavy line. <laughs> if you can do the tight lining, which is like underneath, you know, raising up your, you could look it up, but you know, you raise up your lid and you put it underneath instead of coming this way. Um, that looks the best. I can't do that. I know how I've taught myself, but it irritates my eyes. It doesn't matter what I do. I have dry eyes already. I live in a dry climate. It's not worth it. What good is it to have that if your eyes are red and watering and you're miserable? That's not a good look. So my best advice for that is try to get the fine micro eyeliners. There's not many. You're going to have to look. Shiseido has one. I like it. It comes in some colors. It's not cheap, but it has a tiniest, ti you don't sharpen it. There's nothing to sharpen. Tiniest little thing, tip. And then the plastic comes all the way up. So if you just click it a little bit and you line your eyes, which I have not lined mine today. That's bad, I'm doing a video about eye lining. Oh well, my bad, I'm sorry. But if you'll do that, it works. A lot of people use these little ones for tight lining, but I use it the regular way on the upper lid lash line for a liner, but it's about half the size of a regular eyeliner. When I use this, no matter how much I smudge and wipe and try to get it thin, it'll never be as thin as this. I found one at Maybelline, makes one that I like. It only comes in like two or three colors, so you don't have the pretty, like this is a navy, and you don't have anything exciting. You've got black and brown, and. I think taupe. I'm going to put that on the screen. I don't remember what colors it currently comes in. It's called Maybelline Precise Skinny. 
And then, of course, there's the famous discontinued. <laughs> if, you, if you're savvy and you want to try to get a brand new one, they're still on eBay. You know, I talk about eBay a lot. It's not cheaper on eBay. I think the price of this has gone up because it's discontinued. And <laughs> I wish it would come back. Mark Jacobs. Anyway, fine liner, I think it was called. And I have plum. This is by far my favorite one still. I still have a little left, but I don't use it that often. I'm saving it. And then I have, I think that's it. I disqualified one made by Revlon makes one, but I found it to be too difficult to use and it pushed too hard. So eyeliners. And then stay out of just stay out of this down here. <laughs> Even if you have no bags, which if you're 55 and up, you're going to start getting bags. And it may, even if like when you put eyeliner underneath, when you're looking in the mirror straight on, it looks okay. It just like from the side, all it does is bring attention to all of this down here. I mean, it really does. You could use a soft, soft brush and some soft eyeshadow. I can't seem to do that because I have too much, too much eye cream and emollient and concealer. It never stays put if I use sh uh, powder, like eyeshadow, a soft, soft color. It doesn't work. And if I use a regular eyeliner or the micro eyeliner on the bottom, even with the smudging brush, it doesn't stay put. And, and you already have shadow down here with the bag. Like when you turn your head around and you look different directions, which that's what's going on in real life, not on a video camera. Reality is that bag causes a shadow and a shadow is going to be a gray color, a dark color, a, a I hate to say black, a purple, a you know, it's reflecting whatever you're wearing, what the light is, the sun, whatever. It's darker than your skin. And it's going to, that um, eyeliner, I think, this is just my humble opinion, just brings that, it makes that color pop. Because you're matching the color there. That brings me to my next tip, which is purple and blue eyeshadow. I know they're beautiful. But have you ever noticed, maybe you haven't, and I don't know, but purple. What color is in here? <laughs> what color are we using concealer to cover? I mean, if you're watching this and you're into makeup and you're over 50 and you're not on a concealer quest for your holy grail under eye concealers and your color correctors to put in this hole right here. I mean, so that that purple doesn't show. Well, it always shows a little, no matter how much you cover it up or in a few hours, it's going to show a little. Anything purple right here just makes that more noticeable. I look at people. I'm not making this up. This isn't just, I mean, I know it is just my opinion, but just start looking at your friends. Notice in the store, wherever you go, if someone's got a purple eyeshadow or blue, a smoky blue, no, just look and see if that doesn't look darker. No matter how much makeup they've caked on to cover that, your eye, your brain sees blue, sees purple, and that your brain will pick that up and it will just make it look more purple. It will. Okay, my last tip. I don't see this very often on YouTube as advice, and I think it makes a big difference, is soften your lip liner, blur it out, even though it might look a little blurry, just a little, is better than that line. Because anywhere you have a line just makes more lines appear. All right, the whole idea is to diminish the amount of lines we're adding to our face. And it's not also always just the way it looks right off. It's like a subliminal thing. <laughs> you think I'm OCD to the max for telling you this, but you see that lip liner and it's a pretty sharp line. 
It looks old fashioned and it looks, it just looks old lady. Take your lip liner and just take your finger and just push it in just a little. You can rub it back and forth. Just push it in a little. Just do it. Just try it for like two weeks. Say, okay, I'm not going to use a harsh lip line a, or a uh, rigid lip line or a hard edge like in the, um, and I don't like to talk about, you know, art, but I was a painter. So I painted fine art painting for many, many, many years. And we call that a hard edge where you take a brush, you have a hard edge. You can make it very soft. You can make it a little bit soft. You can make an edge just a tiny bit soft. So when you've got like a portrait, if you're painting it and you've got hard edges, it's just not going to look good. It doesn't look realistic. Human beings aren't created with hard edges everywhere. Alrighty. And when you're younger, you more have more of a distinct line and each year it just sort of like blurs out a little. So adding that hard line right back in isn't doing you any favors, girl. I'm telling you. <laughs> so try it for two weeks and let me know or try it one time and let me know. I would love to know if you've tried any of these and what you think. And if you think I've lost my mind and I'm completely bonkers or if there's some truth to it. So I hope these tips have helped you and I hope that maybe you might give them some thought and try them out and let me know what you think. I appreciate your time watching my videos. This is Maggie D. I'm saying goodbye.